Hi guys, my name is Marcel and you know what I like? Not to show your face? Yes, that and also drawing manga. I like it so much, in fact, I've drawn manga for six years straight and illustrated and released a whole manga series by myself, all drawn traditionally with far over 700 pages. And while reading said manga series, you guys were like, wait, how did you do that? Or this? Or that. And today I'm going to show you exactly that. How I'm drawing some of these effects when I'm drawing my manga pages. My manga videos usually aren't as popular as my other drawing tutorials. But if you support this video, I'll gladly make more of them. I've got tons of videos in mind. Like publishing manga yourself. Or setting up a scene correctly. And also, while drawing manga, I know most artists use 3D references and models. Which can be pretty helpful. And I also use them personally. You know, to double check things like hands and more complicated stuff when I'm drawing manga pages or new artworks. I mostly use tools and apps that actually cost money, but if you want to have a free tool, you can take a look at JustSketch.me. They were kind enough to sponsor today's video. This tool has got the bare basics you would need in case you're struggling with perspective or proportions. There's even a way to customize tiny details like hands or finger positions and so on. It's pretty helpful if you want to set up a scene for a storyboard or your own manga, especially when you struggle with perspective. And there are a lot of artists using it already. JustSketch.me is available for free without any hidden limits or restrictions. But if you want to have the pro version, you can get access to more advanced models. And the first 100 people to use the code draw like a sir get a 20% discount. Like I said, that only goes for the first 100 people to use this code, so you can only use this if you're quick. The pro version has more advanced 3D models like fantasy creatures, stylized bodies like chibis, basically any animal you can think of, items like melee weapons, decorations and so much more. They also offer free licenses for teachers or art classes, which I think is just awesome. Full stop. Check them out, the website's name is justsketch.me. And don't forget, with this code you can get 20% off of premium with all the advanced models. And yeah. It also works on your phone. Alright then, let's get into drawing manga like a sir. Alright, let's start with the basic effect that everyone thinks of when it comes to drawing comic or manga, speed lines. You know, in case you wanna go fast. As you might know, I usually ink manga pages with pen and nibs, but you can also use liners for that. So let's start from the very basics here. Speed lines start off very thick and they get petite along the way. That's basically the most common way to draw them. With a pen nib that's pretty easy because you just need to add some pressure in order to make the line thicker and then gradually get a bit looser. And if you're doing it correctly, this also works with liners as well. They can also fade from thick to thin. And yes, same goes for digital art, by the way. You also have some pen pressure there. Although with digital art, you can also just paste in some speed lines. I'm not a fan of that look. It always looks a bit too artificial in my opinion, but to each their own. And also, while drawing speed lines, I always prefer drawing them in a pack of threes or fours. I think that's a lot easier on the eyes than just packing up everything with speed lines. This would look a bit too busy. Okay, now that you know how speed lines work, let's try to apply them on an easy example together. As you might know, there isn't just one, but many different types of speed lines. So speed lines are as versatile as my accent. <laughs> For our first example, we're taking a look at the easiest one. Drawing speed lines in the background, plain and simple. You have a character running from the right to the left in this example. It's optional, but in my opinion, the speed lines in this particular background should move from left to right. Why, you ask? Well, just like in real life, if there's motion blur, you always see something fading from the direction the movement's coming from. Like I said, this is totally optional, but you could also just do it the other way around. I also switched it up once in a while. The most important thing here, after all, is the shape you're going with. There's like a certain shape you want to maintain with speed lines. The best way to go about it here is to have them be the longest at the outer borders while gradually fading so that they don't use up much space. Remember, speed lines are not supposed to draw any attention to them. They are more of an accessory than anything else. So you don't want them to be a distraction. Don't clutter your page with them. Same goes for radial speed lines. You could make them a perfect circle, but I always like to mix it up a bit. 
Speaking of which, when I'm drawing radial speed lights, I always work with a vanishing point. First, I set up my panel, and right after that, I loosely pencil in the shape of my speed lights. So, this way, you only have to follow the shape that is penciled in already. It doesn't have to be 100% correct. Adding a bit randomness here and there always looks a bit more natural and not like it's just, you know, copy pasted in digitally. That's also a nice way to portray motion. If you play around with this, it could result in some really cool panels. What I'm doing here is exactly the same thing I did prior. Adding a vanishing point and then drawing towards it. And in case you want to portray motion, this is also the very same thing. This arm swipe here is the perfect example. When swiping your arm, your shoulder's basically not moving at all. All the while the end of your arm, aka your hand, is the part that's traveling the furthest. So of course this one has more motion blur. So when drawing speed lines, that's the exact way to portray it as well. But please always remember that these speed lines are a cool way to complement the scene, but they are never the main actor here. So don't overdo it with adding them to your panels. Woo! Alright, enough about speed lines already. Even I'm sick of that topic now. Before we head to the obvious part, which is sound effects, I mean, literally has effects in the name, I also wanted to talk about screen tones. Basically, since manga is black and white, screen tone is the grayscale that gets added to it. I've seen people use whiteout to replicate this, I've seen people use Copic markers to replicate this, but that's not really the way to go here. Traditionally, screen tone is a self-adhesive foil that gets glued onto your paper, where you can then cut it any way you want to. I know this sounds weird, but if you're taking a look at some original manga pages that were drawn by Japanese artists, you can clearly spot that this is the way they added these grayscales. I'm also working with screen tones from time to time, but only really for special occasions, because screen tones... expensive as hell. I would honestly suggest to just add screen tones digitally after you scan your manga pages, because otherwise you'll actually be the definition of a starving artist. So yeah, in case you see some cool effects in manga that aren't completely black, or white and more like grayish, you can bet they are just pasted in screen tones. Always have been. So just in case it's not obvious to you, you can draw these artworks with these spaces left blank and then you add the screen tones after the fact. Alrighty, and last but not least, sound effects. And man, do I love adding sound effects to manga pages. It makes it all just look so much more dynamic. Uh, sound effects are the perfect way to spice up but, your manga. But why are they Japanese? You can't use Japanese sound effects if you're not from Japan yourself. Horikoshi uses Western sound effects too. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I thought, you little fuck. There are many different ways to draw sound effects, but I like to focus on mainly three styles. There are the ones that are plain black, the ones with thick black outlines, and the one made with brushes. The first two ones are self-explanatory, uh, I hope. But when it comes to the last one, I can absolutely recommend a brush pen. That's how I painted these Japanese sound effects, and it's admittedly a bit tricky at first, but I just love the way this looks on a finished page. Uh... And before you ask, yes, as always, I linked this pen along with all of my other manga materials and art supplies on my website. Please stop asking what kinds of pens or pen nibs or ink I'm using or where I get them. It's all linked on my website in my art supply list, along with the apps and the software I use to add screen tones. And additionally, I've also made a whole video where I explain my art supplies, so really there's... No need to ask. And I know, there's also the big elephant in the room of I can't speak Japanese, so how am I supposed to add these? That's okay, you don't need to be like an S-tier weep for that. <laughs> for looking up sound effects, I personally used a database with the most essential kanji and katakana you could use. Of course, I would always double check them before I use them in case you don't speak any Japanese at all. But it's always a nice way to get some quick help if you're completely lost with this topic. Now, if you still need help with designing characters for your manga or actually drawing and designing a manga page and manga panels, your boy Marcel's got you covered on this. I do have a whole how to draw manga playlist with these topics, from fight scenes to character designs. Check them out if you didn't already. My name's Marcel and I'm off because... I still need to prepare two conventions and one workshop for this month alone. <laughs> Pray for me.